we have one pin support at point B, and there is another pin support at point D. And there will be two forces acting on the beam. The force is going to be downward. I'm going to call this one P sub A. And there is another force acting here, which is P sub C. The dimensions are given. The moment of inertia of the shaft is also provided. Also, we know the length for each part. The lengths are given to be L1, L2, and L3. The first part would be determining how much is the reaction force on each of these two supports. The reaction force at B, let's call that B sub Y, and the reaction force at D, let's call that D sub Y. In order to determine those reaction forces, we need to use some of the moments and uh, some of the forces. Let's write down some of the moments about D. Um, those two external forces, PA and PC, are rotating the element uh, counterclockwise. So that would be PA multiplied by the distance, which is L1 plus L2 plus L3, plus force that is acting at C multiplied by the distance, which is L3. This is equalized by the reaction force at B. So BY multiplied by the distance, which is L1 plus L2. So everything in this problem is given except BY. We can solve it for BY. All right, the other equation that we need to use would be some of the forces in the Y direction. There are two forces pushing the structure downward, PA and PC. And there are two reaction forces on the upward direction, BY and DY. Three of these four parameters are known, and from that, we can determine how much is dy. After determining those reaction forces, we need to build the shear and moment diagrams. I'm going to start from the left side. At the left side, there is a force that is pushing that beam downward, so there will be one initial force here. The magnitude of this shear force would be P sub A, equal to that external force. After that, it's going to remain constant all the way to that support. At that support, it's going to jump up like this. And the magnitude of this jump would be B sub Y, the reaction force. Then it's going to remain constant all the way to P2. There will be another jump down here. The jump would be equal to P sub C. It remains constant all the way to the other end, and it should get back to zero. Based on that, we can identify three different areas in the shear diagram, A1, A2, and A3. And if I want to build the moment diagram, I'm going to start from the left side. The moment is zero. The shear diagram is negative, constant, so the moment is going to decrease linearly like this. After that, the shear diagram is going to be positive. So the moment is going to be increased linearly like this. And after that, the shear is negative, so it's going to get back to zero like this. There will be two maximum moments here. I'm going to call them M positive max and M negative max. How can I determine those maximum moments? We will see that the moment should be equal to the area under the shear diagram for the first part. So I would conclude here that the maximum positive moment is equal to area 1. How much is area 1? That would be PA multiplied by L1. So that would be the answer for one part of the problem. The other one says, what is the maximum negative moment? Sorry, I need to switch these two. The first one is negative, and the second one is positive. Okay, how can I determine the moment maximum positive in this case? I need to add up A1 and A2, so I can determine A2 and plug that here, or there is one easier way. If we start from the right side, we know that the change in the moment diagram is equal to the area under the shear, so that would be negative area 3. And area 3 is dy multiplied by L3. Okay? So this is the way for determining the maximum positive and negative moments. After that, if I want to determine the stresses, 
the section is symmetric. Uh, the cross-section area is a circle, so maximum positive and negative are going to be the same. Um, C would be half of external diameter, or D over 2. And I would be able to determine how much is that stress, M, C over I. The moment of inertia for a shaft is pi diameter to the fourth over 64. And the moment that is used in this equation would be the maximum absolute value of the positive and negative moments that we have calculated before. Now we can plug the numbers and calculate what is the maximum bending stress in this shaft.